This is part 2 of our Fishing for Tarpon series. Discovering where tarpon reside can be an exhilarating experience for any angler. These elusive fish have unique feeding patterns and follow specific migration routes, making it essential to identify their preferred habitat. Here are some tips for identifying tarpon habitats. Look for shallow water. Tarpons prefer shallow waters that provide them with easy access to prey. Check out grass flats. Tarpon love hanging around grassy areas where they can find plenty of bait fish. Find drop-offs and channels. These areas offer a natural funnel for bait fish, making it an ideal spot for tarpon to hunt. Look for structure, bridges, docks, and other structures create shade and attract small fish that tarpon feed on. Once you've identified potential tarpon habitats, understanding tides and currents is the next step in catching these incredible fish. Understanding tides and currents is crucial for any angler hoping to catch tarpon, as these factors greatly affect the fish's feeding patterns and behavior. Tarpons are known to be most active during incoming tides when they move inshore to feed on prey that is carried towards them by the current. During outgoing tides, they tend to move offshore into deeper waters, where they rest and conserve their energy. To increase your chances of catching tarpon, it's important to have a good understanding of tidal patterns in the area you'll be fishing. You can consult local tide charts or download an app that provides real-time information about the rising and falling of tides in your location. Additionally, you should familiarize yourself with the direction and strength of currents in the area as this can also impact where tarpon will be found at different times of day. Additionally, you should familiarize yourself with the direction and strength of currents in the area as this can also impact where tarpon will be found at different times of day. Once you have a good grasp on how tides and currents work in your fishing spot, you'll be better equipped to identify areas where tarpon are likely to congregate. The next step involves spotting their activity through observation techniques such as looking for rolling or jumping fish or watching for birds diving into the water near schools of baitfish. By combining knowledge about tidal patterns and current movements with visual cues from tarpon activity, you'll be well on your way towards successful fly fishing for these elusive game fish. To spot tarpon activity, you'll want to keep your eyes peeled for any signs of rolling or jumping fish, and listen for the telltale sound of birds diving into the water near schools of baitfish. Look for surface movements. Tarpon often create a V-shaped wake when swimming just under the surface. Keep an eye out for this movement as it's a strong indication that there are tarpon in the vicinity. Check out the shadows. Tarpon can be easily spotted by their large shadows on the sand or seagrass beds. Watch for bubbles. When tarpon feed near the surface, they tend to blow air bubbles before attacking their prey. Look out for these bubbles and get ready to cast once you see them. Listen carefully. You can hear tarpon rolling and gulping air from quite a distance away. Listen closely for this sound as it'll give you an idea of where they might be located. Use polarized sunglasses. These sunglasses allow you to see through glare on the water's surface and spot fish more easily. With these spotting techniques in mind, you'll have an easier time locating migrating tarpons in open waters. To improve your chances of making successful casts, let's move on to mastering your technique in casting your fly towards these elusive game fish. To master the cast when fly fishing for tarpon, you need to focus on three key points basic casting techniques. Double hauling. Dealing with wind and obstacles. Start by perfecting your basic casting techniques and work on your timing for a smooth, accurate cast. Proper rod positioning is key to a successful cast. Keep the rod at a slight angle behind you with your forearm parallel to the ground. When you're ready to cast, smoothly bring the rod forward and stop abruptly at 10 o'clock position. This will allow the line and fly to shoot forward towards your intended target. Timing and tempo are also important factors in basic casting techniques. You want to wait until your line is fully extended behind you before beginning your forward cast. Then, use a smooth acceleration followed by an abrupt stop at 10 o'clock position on your forward cast as well. Line control is crucial in fly fishing for tarpon as well. Make sure you're not stripping too much or too little line during your casts while simultaneously aiming for distance and accuracy. Once you've nailed down the basics of casting, Double hauling is a game changer for increasing your distance and accuracy while fly fishing for tarpon. This technique involves using both hands to create additional line speed and power in your cast. To start double hauling, begin by making a regular back cast with your dominant hand. As you bring the rod forward on the forward cast, use your non-dominant hand to pull on the line at the same time as you stop the rod abruptly. This creates extra tension in the line and loads up more energy for a longer cast. Improving accuracy and increasing distance are essential skills when it comes to fly fishing for tarpon. Double hauling can help you achieve both of these goals by adding extra power and speed to your cast. Now that you've mastered the double haul, it's time to tackle another challenge, dealing with wind and obstacles. Fly fishing for tarpon is not an easy feat, especially when Mother Nature decides to throw a curveball your way. 
strong winds can make casting difficult, and obstacles like mangroves and docks can prove to be quite the hindrance. With proper wind management techniques and obstacle navigation skills, you'll be able to handle any situation thrown your way. When dealing with wind, it's important to adjust your casting technique accordingly. Use more power in your backcast to help push the line forward into the wind. You may also want to switch up your fly pattern to something heavier or more aerodynamic for better casting performance. To navigate around obstacles, try approaching them from different angles or using sidearm casts. This will help you avoid getting tangled in branches or hitting a dock post mid-cast. Remember that practice makes perfect, take some time before heading out on the water to practice casting around stationary objects like trees or poles so that when you encounter real-life obstacles while fly fishing for tarpon, you'll be prepared. To hook and fight a tarpon, you'll need to be patient and steady with your movements, allowing the fish to take the bait before setting the hook. Tarpon behavior is unpredictable, so it's important to keep a close eye on your line and bait. Once you notice the tarpon taking interest in your offering, allow it enough time to fully consume the bait before beginning your strike. When it comes to hooking techniques for tarpon, timing is everything. It's crucial that you feel a firm tug on your line before setting the hook with a quick upward motion of your rod. If done correctly, this will cause the hook to lodge securely in the tarpon's jaw and initiate an intense battle between angler and fish. We would like to thank you for watching and please subscribe to our channel and have a look at out in depth blog on fishing for tarpon. It is every topic about these magnificent creatures. Goodbye for now. See you in the next video in our fishing for tarpon series.